Hello do-it-yourselfers. If you're like most people, your home's electrical system tends to be just one big mystery. We typically aren't too concerned about how things work until something goes wrong. Then we have to struggle through the steps of figuring out exactly what went wrong and more importantly, how to fix it. My name is Terry Peterman and I am the internet electrician. My goal is to take the mystery out of your home's electrical system. I want you to understand how things work, how to troubleshoot when things go wrong, and how to safely complete the most common electrical projects and repairs. But the first step is to understand exactly what's involved with your home's electrical system. To help you with that, I've developed a series of videos that will break down your home's electrical system. By the end of this series, you're going to have a clear understanding of how the power gets into your home, how it's distributed throughout your home, and right down to the end components like the receptacles, the switches, and the lights, etc. We're going to start at the breaker and we're going to work our way through each and every circuit. I'll discuss the amperage of the breaker, the wire size, the wire type, and all the components that form part of that circuit. This circuit is a 20 amp, 120 volt, labeled washer. Let's check it out. With this circuit dial, it feeds the washing machine. So it was labeled washer, it was a 20 amp, 120 volt single pole breaker. So the wire that we should have feeding this should be a 12-2 NMD wire fed through the walls and right to this outlet box and then connected to this single receptacle that we have here. So now what we want to do is pull apart this receptacle and make sure that we do have 12 gauge wire and everything is good, connections are made well and the things that can go wrong with something like this would be really only uh, broken or damaged or worn receptacle and should something happen to the cable between here and the panel or connections in the main panel. So until you have problems there's no need to investigate but those are the types of things that can go wrong. So let's make sure we shut the correct breaker off and then we will open this up and see what we got. All right, I've opened up this junction box, pulled out the outlet, removed the faceplate, pulled the outlet out of the device box. And what we have here is a 20 amp, 125 volt single receptacle. Well, actually this is a 15 slash 20 amp, 125 volt receptacle, because as you can see, it will accept a plug that has, a, it's called a T-slot receptacle. So a 20 amp plug, a real 20 amp plug, has the straight port on this side, as does a 15 amp. But on this side, a true 20 amp plug will have the blade on the neutral side turned horizontally. So this is a T-slot that will accept either a 15 or a 20 amp plug to go into this device. So, fed with the 20 amp breaker, it is number 12 wire. I've looked at this side of the receptacle and it's a good connection made to the device. Notice how the wire comes in and it's wrapped clockwise around the screw so that when you tighten that screw, it helps it to tighten instead of pushes it away from the from the connection. But I turn it over on this side and I've noticed two problems. Now if we can see that, both the neutral and the ground, they're terminated backwards to how I like it done. The neutral's coming in from the top here and goes counterclockwise around that screw terminal, as does the ground. So when you go tighten that screw, you have a tendency to push it out of the connection instead of helping it turn clockwise around and, and assist in getting a nice tight connection. And there's one more, so I'm going to fix that, but there's another problem I see here as well. 12 gauge wire is a little harder to work with and sometimes it's tough to strip. And I've mentioned it before in some of my articles about being careful not to nick the conductor itself when you're stripping it. So I'm looking at this neutral conductor here and I see some nick marks where they strip that wire, where they strip the insulation off. So in addition to it being going around the screw the wrong way, that creates a weak point where they've nicked the copper. So I'm just going to show you how easy it is to break that off. If you move that in the box a couple times, pushing it in and out, it breaks off quite easily once it's been scored. So you don't want to have any nicks on your actual conductors when you're stripping the wire. So I'm going to redo this splice, show you how to properly wrap it around those terminals. Okay, so I did notice one other little problem here when I took apart the ground wire, took it off the terminal. That ground wire still had paint all coated on the, on the wire, on the conductor itself. So I scraped off that paint, 
tightened up my my curls a little bit on these wires so they fit a little tighter around the terminal around the screw terminal first my ground on notice in a clockwise direction so when I tighten up that screw pulls the conductor around doesn't tend to push it out neutral I restripped and curled this one tighten it down nice and snug and now I'm ready to put this device back into the box put the cover plate on and restore the power So that's it for this edition of the basics of household wiring, your home wiring taken from the circuit breaker right through to the end device. This one was the washing machine. Just a recap, 20 amp breaker, single pole, feeding through the home to this outlet box and a 20 amp, 125 volt single receptacle and your washing machine plugged in again and turned back on. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna be doing a series here on every circuit in your home, so stay with us for those. Check out what we got here on the site. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you can check out what's here now and you'll be the first to know when there's new information here in you, on YouTube and on our website at electrical-online.com. Thanks for coming by.